Marvelous hello, friends and loved ones! How are you today? Welcome to a very special episode. It is the fifth anniversary of the first video I ever uploaded. For those of you that are a little unclear on how we do anniversaries here on the Strain42 channel, I've always followed a very specific pattern. We started with Glover, and then I did a wrestling game, then Glover, wrestling game, Glover, and now we are back to wrestling game. And I figured in the grand year of 2020, I should take a look at WWE 2K20. I'm going to regret this, aren't I? No. So, two years ago, I covered SmackDown vs. Raw on the PS2, which, until now, was the most recent wrestling game I'd really invested my time into. And I admit, I've been curious about how far wrestling games have come in the past 16 year. <clears throat> yes, 16 years. I never really heard much, good or bad, about the franchise in that time, until a certain game called WWE 2K19. I was hearing great things about this game. I'm not really sure what it did that was so solid, but people seemed to enjoy it. I was actually considering playing that game for my 5 year anniversary, but I figured I should probably play the most recent game. If 2K19 was good, 2K20 has to be pretty good too, right? Right? Not right! Yeah, 2K20 was widely considered to be one of the worst games of 2019. It's in the bottom 10 on Metacritic, and several YouTubers like Jim Sterling and The Completionist had it in their worst games of 2019 videos. The Lauder even had it at number one. But I'm determined to not just dunk on how bad the game is and try to look at it as fairly as I can in a style that you've all come to love and respect me for. Unless the Ratatouille game was one of your childhood favorites. Those people hate me. So there are several different modes in WWE 2K20, such as the Feature Showcase, retelling iconic matches from the Four Horsewomen and letting you recreate these fights by completing certain objectives. Or the 2K Originals, where I paid 15 bucks, which is almost what I paid for the full game, to see some of the worst storytelling I've ever seen, but did get to enjoy some amusing matches of superstars taking on hilarious personas. Like, the Iconics being a group of preppies named Heather and Other Heather. I honestly wouldn't mind seeing a standalone game that focused more on this idea. But for this video, I'm gonna primarily be looking at the My Career mode. So before we move on to the main attraction, let's hear a word from today's WWE sponsor, Glover. It's presented by Glover. New Nintendo 64, gotta love the glove. How crazy is it that Glover actually did sponsor the WWE at one point? Kind of makes my weird yearly tradition thing make a bit more sense, huh? And our other sponsor, all of my awesome supporters on Patreon. I don't plug this very often, but I just want to throw out that if you like what I've been doing for the past five years and want to see more, please consider pledging to my Patreon. One dollar a month goes a long way and you can gain access to cool rewards like monthly newsletters, your name in the credits of these videos, an invitation to the Strain42 Discord channel, and right now I'm even hosting a special patron-only event called the Strain42 Round Robin Grand Prix, where my supporters are voting on which games I'll be doing videos on in the upcoming year. So if you want to support the channel and even play a part in shaping the future of it, you'll find a link to my Patreon in the description below. Thank you, and let's get back to the action. Alright, so since WWE 2K20 does qualify as a recent game, consider this your spoiler warning, in case you're just so invested in the many dramatic twists and turns of WWE 2K20. 2K20 Story Mode is called My Career Mode, and for the first time in the series history, you make both a male and female fighter. And I think you all know what that means. It's time for the man, the myth, the legend himself, Dave America Jr. For those of you that have no idea who Dave America is or what I'm talking about, you can click that card to watch a four-year-old video. Yeah, I don't blame you. And his childhood best friend, 
Aika Nakamura from the Persona 4 anime. Two lovable misfits who apparently don't age a single day over the 20 years in which the story takes place. I don't know if that means they were really young looking in their late 30s or just looked really old when they were in high school. Of course, no matter how you try to customize these characters to fit your own ideals, my career mode sets them onto a predetermined path. For example, Aika is primarily known as Red, because she has a red-hot temper that makes her... After I'm done with you tonight, you'll understand why they call me Red. Because all that pretty white snow out there will be stained red with your blood. And then every time it snows, the children who were here tonight will be reminded of the carnage they saw and refuse to go outside. And after you spend weeks in the hospital and are finally able to drag your broken body onto the airplane back to Orlando, the pilot will be so terrified by the sight of your mangled face, he will lose control of the plane, sending it crashing down to the earth. Say stuff like that. And Dave America Jr. is known as Trey, because in high school he slipped and busted his butt on a lunch tray. Not exactly the heroic reclaiming of a humiliating nickname that you get from something like Deku, but whatever. For the sake of this video, I'll primarily be referring to them as Aika and Dave but just know that this game does not give a crap about your visions for who these characters are. In fact, Dave is adopted, and a huge part of his storyline relates to him finding out about his real parents. Of course, we all know the whereabouts of Dave America Sr. He's dead. And as luck would have it, so are Trey's real parents in the game. Wow, that got dark. The My Career Mode story is told primarily through flashbacks, as Aika and Dave reminisce about all the things they've done in their careers that led them to this night, the ceremony where they'll be inducted into the WWE Hall of Fame. I was originally going to make a, hey, just like in Persona 5 joke, but honestly, no, it's not like Persona 5. If anything, it's much more like when a really bad sitcom does a clip show episode. We have a brief scene in the present, and then someone will show up and be like, Hey, haha, remember that time when we... And that's as good a reason as any to cue the flashback. Because of this, the story jumps around uh, pretty much anywhere it wants, but typically showcases some of the biggest moments of their careers. Me personally, I think the best parts of the story are actually all the things that happened before Dave and Ika joined the WWE. The indie scene matches where they travel around the country in a beat-up car, getting into dance-offs with a rib mascot named Ribby, or performing in some small ring in LA while the local commentators throw out their own unique dialogue, is genuinely fantastic. We've been informed that a guy here has lost his wedding ring. If you find it, please turn it in, or just pawn it, I don't care. And if I'm being perfectly honest, I think I'd rather play a game that focused entirely on this aspect of wrestling. The closest thing to an ongoing plot in 2K20, besides Aika and Dave climbing through the ranks, is their rivalry with their high school bully, Brooklyn Von Braun, who is, to put it simply, cartoonishly evil. She starts out as just a mean girl in high school, but uses her career as an MMA fighter to eventually get into WWE and seek to destroy Aika and Dave's careers. There's one scene where it's revealed that after donating a million dollars to an animal shelter in an attempt to trick your characters into thinking she'd turned over a new leaf, she bought the shelter, kicked out all the animals, and is turning it into a tanning salon. She is just so over-the-top mean that you can't help but want to defeat her. Also, Dave has his own rival in this game in the form of real wrestler Samoa Joe, who has, like, a robot arm in this game because... That's a thing that happens. The story is broken up into 18 chapters, and some are definitely longer than others. Some are only about half an hour and you just have one or two fights, and some are like two hours and have eight fights. So you never really know what you're going to get into with each part of the story. One thing that my career does a lot that I'm really not a fan of is similar to the other modes I already mentioned, some of these fights have objectives that make the fight play out more like an elaborate cutscene than an actual fight. Now, sometimes these are done really well and help set up proper tension, like forcing certain characters to lose a fight so you can't just cheese the best out of five tournament you get dragged into. These objectives make the fights really short, and it's usually just something simple like damage them enough and then hit them with a normal strike attack, and then the fight is over. These are fine when you have to lose, but what I really hate is some of these force you to win. I know that sounds like a really weird complaint, 
but like literally the last fight in the game. The final showdown between Ika, Brooklyn, Dave, and Samoa Joe basically boils down to a cutscene. It's hard to feel triumphant when your win is predetermined. Plus, they don't even give Brooklyn any kind of good comeuppance in the story. So the fights were all I had, and we don't even get those. WWE 2K20, don't do such a good job of making me hate this character and then not let me have any catharsis when I beat her. Speaking of the characters Ika and Dave, or specifically Red and Trey, actually do have really good chemistry together. They're at their best when they're bouncing off one another, and they do feel like legitimate friends. They didn't even try to force in any awkward romantic tension between the two, and I appreciated that. I'd honestly say that Red and Trey's friendship is the highlight of this entire story, even if Red does have a secret that is legitimately a horrible thing to have done to who is supposed to be her best friend. See, Red learns through Trey's adopted parents that his real parents are dead, but rather than breaking that news to Trey or convincing his adopted parents to tell him the truth, she writes a letter to him from his dead parents to give him hope that they're out there somewhere. A secret that the ghost of Ika past desperately wants her to keep hidden for 20 years. Aside from that though, Ika is a great character. She's bold, determined, and really is the focal point of this story. Dave, on the other hand, is a total loser. Pretty much everybody from start to finish just dunks on this poor dude. He's so much of a loser that even when he wins, he loses. If you're a guy and you made Trey as a self-insert of yourself, this story might do some lasting damage to your self-esteem. He is a lovable loser that you may find yourself cheering for, but yeesh, typically things do not go great for this guy. Why does everyone keep saying that? So yeah, the My Career Mode is basically a highlight reel of all of Dave and Ika's biggest adventures, like when they got high off lemony voodoo dust, or when they teamed up with The New Day to take down Becky Lynch and her gang, or Dave got to star in a WWE action movie and beat the crap out of a dude with a hammer. I mean, Dave had the hammer, not the guy he beat the crap out of. That guy was just defenseless. You may have noticed that unlike many other reviews out there discussing this game, I haven't really showcased any hilarious glitches like characters falling through the stage or anyone's arms going stretchy spaghetti all over the ring. And sadly, it's because... I, I guess this game got patched at some point, so I don't really have any super funny footage to show all of you. Except for maybe this. Does this count? Is this amusing? I, I don't know, I think it's kind of chuckle-worthy. Don't get me wrong, I definitely still ran into glitches, just not ones that are funny to show. I mostly ran into stuff like the game freezing on me and then crashing, or a couple of scenes where the announcer's audio just didn't work. Thank goodness for subtitles. And then this weirdly consistent thing. Make that mistake tonight. If I was able to beat two opponents with only one good eye, why does the camera bounce up there like that? It doesn't make any sense. I also had this one moment where I lost a match, but then the game just kept going as if I'd won, so... Okay. Also, this technically isn't a glitch, but I just wanted to show this off because this one moment made me laugh harder than anything the game did that was actually meant to be funny. Everyone's standing in anticipation to see who truly is the best superstar in the women's division. But at the end of the day, do you want to know what the worst thing about 2K20 is? In my eyes, it's not the glitches, it's not the bugs, it's not the often cringeworthy storyline, it's not even that at its best, the gameplay is incredibly mediocre. It's that WWE 2K20 has absolutely no respect for your time. For starters, the loading screens. You have to sit through so many of these, and they're so long, and just look at them. Look at how ugly these things are. Each chapter only has one loading screen, so you're going to be staring at these images a lot. The game boasts that my career mode is 15 to 20 hours long, and to be fair, mine was about 15 hours. But I am convinced that at least a third of that was spent staring at these ugly loading screens. 
It's a static image, there's no excuse for them to be looking this bad. I've seen better looking character models in The Sims 2. And the abysmal loading times aren't even the worst offender. There are plenty of instances where if you lose a match, you have to rewatch the entire unskippable cutscene that led up to it. Pretty late in the game, Dave had to compete in a Royal Rumble. Thankfully, unlike SmackDown vs. Raw, I didn't have to sit through the entire thing, but if you lose, and it's really easy to lose this fight, you have to re-watch this like 90 second cutscene before you can jump back into the match. And after attempt number 6 or so, I was starting to get pretty fed up with this. So, yeah, the story has a few good ups here and there with its characters and dialogue, but that's about the best I can say. If you're really curious about it, the game is pretty cheap now, but I'd still wait for it to get even cheaper. 2K20 is just not that good of a game. Even if everything worked perfectly, I'd say it's average at best. I know it's not the only factor, but the reception to this game is definitely a part of why we aren't getting a 2K21 this year. And in fact, the next WWE game we are getting is a tonally different experience, with more stylized designs and over-the-top crazy action, and actually this doesn't look that bad. Maybe I'll be talking about this game in 2022. And so, once you're done with all of that and you've decided you're just ready to stop playing this game, you can make four computer-controlled fighters duke it out against each other as four different versions of 2K20 cover superstar Becky Lynch while you sit back and get sloshed on Mike's Hard Lemonade. Hypothetically speaking, of course. Please drink responsibly. Alright, because I want to end this video, as well as my five-year anniversary on a high note, allow me to share with you all, unedited, my favorite thing in WWE 2K20. Ribby's Sweet Dance Moves. Thanks for celebrating my channel's 5th anniversary with me. If you liked this video, go ahead and click that like button. And if you really liked it, don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss out on any future content. I want to give an extra special shout out to my friends and loved ones on Patreon, and if you'd like to see your name in these ending credits, feel free to pledge today to support my channel. I will see you all in the next video, and until then, take care.